So as I was uh, talking about your work, um, it, it seems to like it, it's of another place in time to me. Um, there are contemporaries that I can think of, but like not American and not from not alive right now. So I was just wondering who you know who you look up to as contemporaries or who who you feel like uh, is writing similar things like you. Uh, Shane is easy. <laughs> no, really, I like Shane is work a lot. And I do have an Irish ancestry, I do honestly. My great grandfather, yeah. Very good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, so, but yeah, I would love Seamus' work. And that very early poem of his about the spade is just like one of my foundation references of my imagination. So I will, I will dig with my pen. Yes, I will dig with my pen. Yeah. Yeah, so that sort of like hits me right there. Oh, no. I, I feel like. So I would, I would, I would say, stay just that one name, Seamus Heaney. I knew there was something about you tonight. You recognize So did you love Oh, I yeah. You can tell that. Gift of the guy. <laughs> Other questions? No? Uh, I would like to, to have you just say, all three of you, have, have you say some things about, I've been reading about other, you know, like Africa and um, uh, Asia, Asian cultures, and um, you know, the term globalism. And I would just like to, to see, to hear what, what you have to say in relation to that concept and in, in relation to like interaction with you know, foreign cultures and distant cultures. Well, there are foreigners here and there. That's global musicians. So I'll give you that question. <coughs> but it's not grab the mic for your answer. Yeah, it's funny you should should you should point that out because earlier when I was talking about that one song that I believe came from northern uh, uh, India, Ireland was so re remote that the uh, Enlightenment never touched Ireland, and W. B. Yeats felt that until the Battle of the Boyne. It was a huge battle fought in Ireland. A European army came to, to Ireland. W.B. Yeats felt that Ireland belonged to Asia. It didn't belong to Europe. And there's a real resonance there. The chieftains did a tour about 10 years ago, and you can find it on video. They toured China and they toured India. And their ability, their natural ability to play with those musicians Unbelievable, and um, that, what you said there certainly definitely struck struck me. And you're going to hear those resonances in our in our music, in our Irish music. It's not European, and in our language, Gaelic language is not Latin based. Um, and I think also in, in, in transference that the old time American music that the church plays is really the music, of Celtic music put through. Interestingly enough, Celtic music met African music on the plantation. The first slaves brought to this country were Irish. Then African slaves came in. They worked side by side. The fields of records of them playing music together. And uh, that resonance, I can't hear that. When I first heard old time music, it just hit me hard. I knew it, knew it in my bones. But these were American tunes. It's no way. Well, it is America, though, except America. No, it's not Tom Tim. Here, here, here. Maybe you want to say something? I was just. Listening to, listening to the answers, and I was just thinking about how poetry is very akin to music, and music is a universal language, and even though poetry is written in all different languages, it has this ability to uh, bring people together, and it has this history of being a language of resistance to, you know, 
whatever oppressive systems need to change. And it's good to be reminded of that. Um, I like to think about writing as an ultimate field of freedom. And I think music is, can be the same.